There you go, Henry's just joined. Well, hello everybody. Hey, you Tony. Good to see you all. Thanks everyone for being there. Apart from Henry being slightly late, but only a minute or so, so that's okay. Right, guys, today I'm just gonna. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> that I'm just pausing the video. That's on my other screen. I'm turning down that uh, all the way to the bottom to save my bandwidth. You guys can turn. You guys know that you can up the quality of the video, don't you? You can up the quality of the video if you go to the little uh, cog symbol. You can increase the quality so it's easier for you to see what's going on. And then you guys can comment on the chats. I like it. Be nice. It would be really nice, guys. I want you guys to really make an effort today with trying to contribute on the chat. I know that there's a big delay. I get it. Uh, but I'd really like to see you guys making an effort to add questions or answer questions on the chat. I'll do my best to try and uh, adjust my lesson with the time delay and everything and all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so let's crack on. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. There we go. <clears throat> then get rid of my video because I haven't got a set for webcam yet. Working on that. Uh, okay, so you guys then can see. Okay, so this is what we're doing today, guys. So we've got three learning objectives. We're looking at displacement reactions. Uh, we're also going to tie in a little bit of other, other metal reactions as well, do some word equations. The more equations I can get you guys to do, the better. So we're going to be looking metals versus metal salts. So just getting you guys to understand what a metal salt is and having that really clamped down and getting you guys to be able to give me answers to those kind of questions in terms of naming the metal salts from the reactions they're going through. Not next one is be able to use the reactivity series to predict reactions and then be able to use information to create order. Now that one there, holy moly, that's tough. Holy moles. That there is tough. These questions, uh, when, when you do GCSE now, um, all the questions are leveled. So I'm going to go to draw. All the questions are leveled. And this one right here, that is tough. It's really, it's really like level. You're talking level seven to nine. It, it's tough. My laptop is already struggling. I might, you know what I might do? I might turn off my Bluetooth if I can, because I don't think I really need that. I turn off the Bluetooth if I can. So let's get rid of that. Rotation lock. I'm sure, that sounds seems okay. Yeah, so this one here is level. I'm going to have to shrink my pen even further here. Still a bit too thick. So this here is level seven to nine. They're the really tough ones. I've picked out some questions from GCSE papers. Hey, Jack, thanks for contributing on the chat. Appreciate that. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is getting this idea of metal and metal salts. So I've actually put in metal reactions. <clears throat> so now, because we haven't done formula yet, I'll leave those up there just for a minute. Uh, so I just want to do a couple of metal reactions with you guys. So let's pick uh, some, some common metals that you guys are going to come across. So question number one, let's do, and we're sticking to word equations here. Now, we will have to move away from word equations fairly briskly as we move it through GCSE. But they do still exist, and they do commonly ask them, so it's good to do this. So we're going to do the reaction between copper and oxygen. We're sticking with the word equation. So you guys can now complete that, please. What's my product going to be? Let's do the next one. I now want to do number two. Let's do, and what I'd like you to do, please, guys, is post on the chat what you think that answer is going to be. That would be great. Let's do magnesium. Magnesium plus chlorine. What's that going to make? Number three, let's do iron plus, uh, let's do bromine. It's always a good one. Iron plus bromine. Now, these, these uh, copper oxide, well done. Great jobs. Nice. I love that. Now, Zyna, you're, you, I love that you wrote the, the, the chemical formula, which is actually correct, by the way. That's copper two oxide. And that, then you've given the name underneath, which is super nice. Yeah. So, just to mention, we, we need to actually do, uh, yeah. Now, Zyna, that's the problem you see. Your formula for magnesium chloride is incorrect, so it's, that's MgCl2, but we haven't done that yet. So just stick with the words, it's better. Also, guys, you need to separate your two your two words. So, the uh, by the way, well done. It's really nice to see you guys getting that right. So this is going to be copper. Now, just to mention Roman numerals, 
Yeah, in this case, it's going to be copper two oxide, but don't worry about it if you haven't got it yet because we haven't got quite that far yet with formulae. But copper oxide is correct. Then we've got magnesium, and there does need to be a separation of the two names. Magnesium space chloride. It's really nice to see you guys getting all these right. I didn't write MgCl2 because we haven't done it yet. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And then iron, this is going to be iron. I'm going to go for iron three in this case. Iron three bromide. You don't need the Roman numerals yet because we haven't done it. But it's nice just to talk to them and mention and kind of flag it that they're going to be there. Okay. So those these these ones are the easy ones, the easy questions in terms of reactions. But what I now want to mention to you guys is I'm just going to highlight, and you can do the same thing. So we can clearly see that these all these three here, these are the metals. Yeah, these are the metals. And all of these guys, I'll change my highlighter color. I can't do it in green because that's going to get become a nightmare. Let's do baby pink. I like baby pink. So these, oh, it hasn't, oh, not brilliant. Nice, nicely done, Mr. Tablet. Yeah, there we go. Copper oxide. These are salts. Yeah, these are called metal salts. So any metal salts, any metal non-metal compound, and this is the first note that we want to make down. I'm going to go back to black for this. Yeah. So first really important fact. Yeah. Metal, metal bonded, bonded to non-metal is a metal salt. So you realize that any metal to non-metal is a metal salt. That's the key thing here. And the reason why this is such an important note to make in our, in our books is because, see, the issue is the word salt. See, students recognize the word salt as household salt, yet sodium chloride. But in reality, any metal non-metal compound is a metal salt. And that's really important. So I want to give some more examples of metal salts. So e.g. metal salts. And these metal salts are really useful for you to, to learn. Yeah, number one, and I'm gonna actually do some colors on this as well because, you know, because I can. <laughs> number one is copper sulfate. Yeah, copper sulfate. And it is spelt with an F by the way. Copper sulfate. Uh, and it's nice to give you the formula too, even though you haven't learned how to do that yet, but it's nice to give it to you, CUSO4. Just want to tell you, technically it comes with a Roman numeral as well. So that's actually copper two and the Roman numeral slots in there. In chemistry, you have to know Roman numerals up to seven. Let's make that a nota bene in our books. I love good nota benes. Nota bene, I don't know quite why. My tablet was, was doing okay previously. Uh, do you want to save step? No, I don't. I'm going to close you down. How many of these have I got running? I don't know how many of them I've got running. Anyway, I've got probably a lot. It's probably because I'm running all the various streams. Yeah. So, okay. So, nota bene. I'm going to do this in red. Nota bene. Um, Roman numerals. Roman numerals. So, you learn these in primary school, and you probably haven't seen them since. And in chemistry, you've got to know up to seven. Only up to seven, it stops at seven. So we've got one, two, three. That's fairly self-explanatory, isn't it? This is the first one of any complexity, which is IV. IV is four. This is one, two, three, four. Then V is five. And then VI is six. And then VII is seven. You've got to be able to do that in for chemistry. There we go. Great note of any to learn. So it's worth learning this. If you already have it, amazing. Okay. So copper sulfate, a very common salt. Yeah. Let's do another another couple of these. Um, let's go for hmm, something else of interest. We could do something like zinc sulfate. No Roman numeral that needed there. Zinc sulfate. Then we've got the other, we've got, oh, and some nitrates. Let's do some nice nitrates. Let's go for magnesium nitrate. I shouldn't have given you that one. No Roman numeral for needed for that one. Uh, here's another one that's important, silver nitrate. So 
Okay. I'm going to do one more as well, sodium chloride. Let's do good old household salt, sodium chloride. I like it. Okay, now, the reason why these are kind of really, really useful to know, I mean, in reality, you can build any of them, and you need to be able to build them rather than learning them. But they are handy, especially this guy. Uh, this comes up year after year after year. Copper sulfate so important. So does silver nitrate. comes up a lot. Loads. Those two are the most most important salts I can actually teach you. It's worthwhile knowing them, that they exist. Okay, so we've been creating metal salts by reacting them. Well done, it's really nice to have seen all you guys remembering that the non-metal name changes, yeah, and they become ides. Now, the, what's interesting is the ides and the eights. So what I'd also like to do is, before I then get into the displacement reactions, I just want to do a couple of more diff, more challenging equations. Now, you have done this in years seven and eight. Um, so let's have a look at this. So this is question number four, I believe, technically. I'm going to switch back to red for my questions. This is going to be much more interesting to see. This is much more challenging. Step up a level. So question number four. So I'm going to react magnesium, magnesium, and hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid. Right, what am I going to make? Much more challenging, two reasons, because I will now make two products. And then I'm gonna give you the rule for this one. So do we have to copy the examples? I didn't finish yet. The examples, yeah, the examples are really useful. There we go, I'm gonna leave that there for a minute. Give you guys a second or two just to contemplate. Jack can finish off his notes. Thanks for messaging, Jack. Really appreciate that. Check Zaina out straight in there. So I keep switching between Zaina and Zaina. Sorry, Zaina. My apologies. Apologize. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Let's see how long it takes her to smile on my video. <laughs> there we are. Zyna's on it. Her products are absolutely correct. So magnesium and hydrochloric acid. So I'm assuming that Jack's now had a chat. Jack, if you, what you can always do is you can always pause the video. So just to give you the rule for this. See, chemistry is all about rules. I love rules. Love rules. So we have a metal reacting with an acid, and I will form... The metal, I will form salt, I will form salt and hydrogen. Now, <clears throat> one of my students many years ago invented this mash. Gotta love mash. Yeah. Metal plus acid, salt and hydrogen. Super handy. I love the fact that your formula, you've corrected your formula. That's really nice. Well done, Zana. It's great. Let's do another one. Right, this time, Zyna, uh, well done, Navina. Well done, you, your post is correct as well. Check, check out Zyna giving me uh, state symbols as well. Love that. Well done. I'm impressed. The annoying thing is it's now hidden that for some reason on the chat, and I can't actually go across and, uh, and fix that because <laughs> it's on my alternative screen, and I haven't got my, uh, my, mouse, my mouse with me. Right, Zyna, this time, Zyna and Navina, can you not post the answer? Let's see if I can get another student to give me the answer to this one. Yeah, let's do number five. Let's do, uh, uh, let's not do iron. Let's do, let's do sodium. Sodium plus hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid goes to. Let's see how many people can now do that. And just remembering, you can use what Zyna and Navina have already posted. You can use MASH. It's about recognizing the salt. Yeah, really, that's what this is about. It's recognizing the salt from this scenario. Well done, Julius. He's on it. Hi, Mr. Duncan. It's been a while, though. I'd just say hello. Oh, hi, Hibber. It's lovely to see you. Oh, look at that. Julius, Owen, Masaru, Lauren, Tanisha. Guys, everyone say hi to Hibber. Hibber is one of my ex-students and she's she was one of my best chemists. 
So everyone say hi to her. She's awesome. Cool. Oh, it's nice to see you. Well done, everyone. Sodium chloride and hydrogen. That's amazing. Right. Let's make this a little bit harder. Let's change it. Number six. I'm going to stick with red, actually. I really like these. I like, I like doing the questions in red. By the way, I like adding in the answers. Sodium chloride, sodium chloride and hydrogen. Sticking with the word equations, which is amazing. Let's do another one. So number six. Let's do calcium, calcium plus nitric acid. Plus nitric acid. Blank and blank. Off you go. Let's see who gets to jump in there, who gets in there first. And since I'm, I'm waiting for you guys to respond, I'm then going to do, mm, let's do potassium. Let's do potassium plus sulfuric acid. Like it. Well done, Julius. He's on it. Outstanding, Julius. Well done, Masaru. That's great. Well done, Callista. Outstanding. Well done, Navina. Loving it. Recognizing what your acids become. Superb. We're going to form calcium nitrate. So the nitric acid creates a nitrate and hydrogen, salt and hydrogen. And then we're going to form the next one. Oh, look at Masaro and Julius on it again. Well done. Potassium sulfate. Love it. So it's nice to see that everyone in the room recognizes what the different acids are doing and the different salts being made. That's outstanding. Love that. Sir, I can't spell calcium. <laughs> That's funny. Calcium with a C. It's C-A-L-C-I-U-M. -C -A yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Well done, Gayatri. Good job. Cool. Okay. So now that we... Now that we know our salts and we can build salts from our acids, we can now look at using the reactivity series to predict reactions. So displacement, this is where true displacement now comes in. Oh, I don't know why the keyboard, I need to ban the keyboard somehow. I don't actually know how to even do that. Okay, displacements. Displacement reactions. It's my amazing singing there. Displacement reactions. Okay, first of all, what is it? Bullet point. When a more reactive, more reactive metal replaces, that's the, the word displace means to replace. They're kind of the same thing. It's just displacement sounds nicer in chemistry. When a more reactive metal replaces the less reactive metal in the salt. Okay, let's look at an example of this. So let's, now this is where the, the reactivity series is super handy. I'm going to go question. Question number one. Oh, we're on like question eight. I'm loving this game. Question eight. So we're going to do... Um, iron, 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 by the way, I'm going I'm to use two today. Iron, oh, in this case, iron two chloride plus magnesium. Right. On the chat, please. What am I going to get? Question number nine. Let's do, um, Let's do blank plus aluminium. I'm mixing it up here. Blank plus aluminium forms, forms, hmm. Forms chromium and aluminium oxide. What was the original guy? What's the blank? Right, number 10. That's how we're getting on the chat. I like it. Great job. So I've had Zion and Avina, Gayatri, Julius and Ian. Well done. So the magnesium takes the coin and iron's left behind. Great job. Well done, guys. 
So we're going to make I we're going to make iron metal and magnesium chloride. So we know using our reactivity table, we know that that's what's going to happen. Let's just quickly explain that. The, the reactivity series is a beautiful thing. We find iron, we find magnesium. We realize that we started off with iron chloride, iron three, uh, two, I think, at time two chloride, which is actually green, by the way. Iron two chloride. I added magnesium metal. And of course, we realize that magnesium is more reactive. It's further up the table. So it's going to steal. Yeah, the chloride is going to be stolen by the, by the magnesium. And we're going to have iron left over. I like it. Great job, everybody, with the, 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 next, the last question. So if aluminium went in and we produced chromium out and aluminium oxide, we can all now predict that what we had before was going to be chromium oxide. I like it. Chromium oxide. Love it. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do... Sodium, oh, switching into symbols, shouldn't do that. Sodium chloride, sodium chloride plus lithium. On the chat, what's going to happen? See how long it takes you guys to figure that one out. <laughs> Love it. So we are now ticking off that learning objective. Yeah. So we can say, number one, we all now understand the difference between a metal and a metal salt. Naveen has fallen for my trap. <laughs> we know the difference between a metal and a metal salt. We can use the reactivity to predict reactions. But Navina didn't bother to check it. Yeah, she didn't bother. Remember, we've done group one, remember, folks? Owen, winner. Well done. Julius, well done. Zina, well done. Yeah, that's correct. No reaction. No change. No switch. Great job. So we know our group one. Now, this was a, this was a mean of me, this. Because what I did here was because you, even if even if Navina got up the reactivity series, what she can't see is where lithium fits in. But luckily, we've done group one already. And we know that as you go down the periodic table, I love my periodic table. Oh, I've just realized probably why my video is going so slow. Yeah, I really wish I wasn't broadcasting that into my thing. It's just, it's just a waste of my CPU, not that it matters. So, my beautiful periodic table. Oh, Navina retracted her message. Oh, I'm sorry, Navina. See, it's even running my camera as well. That's actually a big thing. So, lithium, we know as you go down group one, they become more reactive. And so, lithium is less reactive than sodium. So, the reaction won't happen. There will be no change. Yeah, so here we can write in green. Let's shrink that down a bit. There's going to be no reaction. It would actually be, just like Julia said, it would actually have exactly the same outcome. It wouldn't actually do anything at all. And the explanation is lithium is less reactive than sodium, so it cannot displace it. Right, okay. This is where things now get hard. Are you ready, year 10? Right. This is now gonna get tough because they're gonna start doing some really clever tricks. So it says here, I'm gonna get rid of that from my notes just to clean it up because it's gonna bother me. <laughs> okay, the student uses copper to sulfate solution in all her experiments. Right, so she's chosen a copper salt. Let's put this into words. Right, I'll go to here. Okay, let's convert this into words. There's my salt. So she's taken copper to sulfate, by the way, which is blue. It's nice to always give you these colors because you have to learn these. You have to know that copper to sulfate is blue. Le bleu. It's uh, French for blue. 
Um, I hope I never offend Lauren by doing my silly French bits because she actually speaks French. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got copper to sulfate. Copper to sulfate. Right, and what they're now going to do is they're now going to add, this is when my laptop is really struggling. Really, 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 really struggling. Oh, look at this. Look how long it's taking. Wow. I, I don't exactly know how to actually improve this. Right. So they're going to take the copper two salt blue. Azul, I think. <laughs> I think you mean le bleu, Jack. <laughs> oh, I need to stop doing that. Anyway, so copper two sulfate. And what they're going to do is they're adding different metals. I love the fact that Zion is like, oh, he needs to give up this crazy French thing. Oh, uh, no. Chemists can always speak French. Le chemistry. You see, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's just, I can also do a Welsh. I can do Welsh as well, you know. <laughs> also, do Leeds, do Yorkshire. How about that? Do you want to stick with Yorkshire? Uh, yeah? Do a Welsh accent. How about a Welsh? The problem is my Welsh keeps coming through as Jamaican. It's a bit of a nightmare. Um, anyway, so what they now do is they've added the different metals in different experiments. Yeah, and one of the metals is X. Right. And what they've done is they've measured the temperature change. So the first question that I put to you guys on the chat, out of the metals, magnesium, silver, iron, X, and zinc, which one was the most reactive looking at the data, please? Which one is the most reactive? On the chat, please, go. First question, which one is the most reactive? Most reactive? Question mark. <laughs> so looking at the data, do you see what they're doing? They're doing a really clever trick. Instead of doing observations, they're monitoring the temperature. And I wonder if you guys, hey, Masaru's on it, Jack's on it, Navina's on it. Great job, straight off. Love it. Yeah, I think most people have got five people straight off the bat. Owen's in there as well. Owen, it has to be a capital M if you're going to use symbols, because otherwise you've just written down milligrams. <laughs> Lol. Yeah, capital, whenever you do a symbol, it's capital first letter, lowercase second. I like it. So I think everyone figured this out. Magnesium had the biggest temperature change. So the most reactive, Mg. And we're now going to descend. Who's the next most reactive then, folks? Sorry, I was being lazy. <laughs> uh, love it. Which one's the next one? Zinc. Thank you very much. Zinc's done. Zinc, so we can actually, let's put this in order from one to five. Come on, little laptop. Come on. So we've got most reactive, second most reactive. Who's the third? Who's the third? Who's the third? Uh, uh. I think everyone's figured this one out. It's not too complicated, is it? So I'm now going to ask on the chat. I like it. Iron's number three. I think everyone's figured this out. I'm going to ask someone specifically now. I'm going to ask Jade. Jade? How did you know Fe Gayatri's just put Fe <laughs> Capital F if you're gonna use symbols. I love the bit you put Fe ah! on the chat. I'm not entirely sure why you're doing that, but hilarious. Um Jade, how did you know that magnesium was the most reactive? How did you know that from the data? So we've got iron. Oh, blimey, Fe. Right. Now, guys, there's a problem. There's a problem. There's a problem. So, silver and X. What's the problem with silver and X in this question? Can we put them in order? And then the really X is silver, gold, or platinum. That's what Jack said. Ah, well, it can't be silver, Jack, because silver's already in the table. But it could be copper, Jack. Could it be copper? Could have been copper. Both have the same... No, Ian, 
they have the same temps. Well done, Owen. Right, Ian, this is really important. No two metals have the same reactivity. They are both below copper, yeah, or are copper. X could be copper, but they will not have the same reactivity. No two metals have the same reactivity. So, okay, here's the, so we don't know. It could be X and silver, or it could be silver and X. Guys, really big question. Can someone now might carry out a displacement reaction to check? Well done, Zyner, because there's my question. Copper may have 0.1. No, 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 no. Jack, you know if you put copper with cop, I'm going to do words because you don't know symbols yet. If you did, ah, oh, come on, computer. If I did copper plus copper sulfate, there will not be a reaction. Yeah, no reaction. If there's no reaction, no temp change. Yeah, you can't, the, the same metal can't displace the same metal. It can't, they can't do that. You wouldn't see any temperature change. That the, you, You'd be, um, I'm trying to think, it just wouldn't move. There'd be no movement. You need to have somebody to be more reactive for the reaction to happen. So because they're the same, the notes for this would be copper, same reactivity, copper and copper. The, the metals in both the salt and the metal have the same reactivity, so no reaction would take place. Yeah, it's the same metal, so no displacement. No reaction, no temp change. So the question is, guys, what reaction would I do? This is where one of the salts that I gave you today was going to come in handy. What am I now, what reaction am I now? Now, Zion has been giving you a really big help. She says, do a displacement reaction. So what am I going to grab from the shelf? What am I going to get? I've got metal X and metal silver. What do I now need to get as well to do this displacement? What do I need to get? This is hard. Who's going to be the first person on the chat for that? Let's see. Silver nitrate. Jack is on it. Outstanding. Well done, Jack. So Jack is going to grab metal X. This is his metal. It's going to get metal X. He's going to react it with a salt. And he's chosen silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. What I am now going to tell you, well done, Julius. Well done, Ian. Great job. X and silver nitrate. What I'm now going to tell you is you form silver and X nitrate. So who goes where in the table now? Which one of these options is, oh, darn it, is pink correct or is blue correct? Which one's now correct based on what we've just done? We've just done an experiment to prove it. So which one now goes where? Which one's correct? Pink or blue? Pink or blue? X is more reactive than silver. Pink. Well done, Owen. Winner. Wait, pink. <laughs> blue. <laughs> Wait, pink. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Loving it. Oh, that really made that really made me chuckle. Well done, guys. So pink's the right one. Because we formed silver metal, yeah, we now know that X is more reactive than silver. Now, you guys think that's tricky? Check out the next question. Okay. Okay, guys, here's your challenge. Here's your challenge, folks. Give me the order of X, zinc, and copper. Give me the, the order of these three metals. I want most reactive, look at the data. So I want on the chat, most to least. Yeah. So blank, comma, blank, comma, blank. Don't rush this, guys. Take your time. Uh, 
and I'm going to sit quietly and chill for a minute. That's really hard. This this was one of the trickiest questions I'd seen in a while. This wasn't last year or the year before. It was the year before that. This was like 2017, I believe. Really tough. Really tough. Most to least. <laughs> least. Yeah. I thought I'd written least then. Yeah, most to least. Most reactive to least reactive. Yeah, least. That's what I've written, least. That's what I've written, right? Have I gone mad? Ah, oh, Julius has given me an answer. I love the fact that it's automatically hidden it. That's boss. Julius is the first person in the room. Come on, guys. Whenever you're ready. Owen's in too. Love it. Owen, you have the same answer as Julius. I love the fact that it's automatically hidden it. It's amazing. It's great. It means no one can see your answers. This is boss. I didn't plan that, by the way. But that's super cool. Julius and Owen have the same answer. Masaru has also got the same answer. Well done. And I love the fact that it's hiding everyone's and this message is held for review. This is boss. I've had three people out of the 12 that are currently on the classroom. You're doing great, guys. Keep going. I love the fact that they've got the same answer. It's awesome. Gayatri, whoa. Gayatri's given me a whole load of answers, but she's not actually giving me the answer. Just give me the three metal symbols. Yeah, the three metal symbols in, in a row. It's tricky, right? It's not easy, this. Right, what I'm gonna ask you to do now, guys, we're gonna add a delay to the classroom. I'm gonna ask you to press pause on the video now. Press pause. Vincent has just left my classroom, amazing. Uh, pause the, the YouTube video, and then when you come up with your answer, you can unpause it and you'll see your answer. Okay? Right, so here's the answer. So first things first, spot the biggest change. So we know that we've done zinc and copper sulfate, then we've done zinc and X sulfate, right? We can see that the biggest change was there. What that means is, well, zinc is also, it's got a reaction. It's reacted with the copper sulfate. What that means is zinc is above copper. But zinc has also reacted with X salt, which means it's also above X. Now, we don't know where X would go yet. X could go either here or here. So that's the question mark now. But what we do know is that zinc is the most reactive. We can add that to the list. So zinc's the most reactive. Yeah. Next, where's copper and X? Right now, if we look at X and zinc, there's no reaction. That makes total sense. X is below zinc. That confirms that. Then we can say, what about X and copper sulfate? Oh, that's reacted. What that means is X is above copper. So that means that the X now confirms in here. Yeah, and then below it then means that it won't. We can then prove that with the other reactions because we look at the other one that copper doesn't, there's no reaction between copper and zinc. This confirms that it's below it, that's good. We also have copper and X sulfate, meaning it, and that no reaction, this confirms that copper is also below X. So it confirms it. So the final answer is zinc, X, and Cu. Yay. Well done to those guys. Wait, it's the other way around. <laughs> it's really nice to see these questions, and they're a bit tricky. What it requires is to be really logical and to not rush it. Students often try to just guess these things, and, and you could have also looked at the, the fact that the zinc and copper have the biggest heat difference, biggest temperature rise as well, which means that they have the biggest difference in reactivity as well. But it's a really nice exercise. At this point, guys, I'm going to come bring our lesson to an end. Let's now go to my learning objectives. Zoom, zoom. And that now use information to create order. That gives us our last learning objective. We've done really, really well today, guys. I'm really, really pleased. Let's now kick back out of the stream, let's go back to this one and go stop sharing, Woo, and I'm back.
Wait, we're back, we're back, back. Right, guys, I'm going to leave you guys being out. By the way, you have homework. I'm going to post on the Google Classroom. It's just a single sheet with just you guys getting to fill out bits and pieces about reactivity and how the metals work. But otherwise, guys, have an amazing rest of your day. It's been great to see you guys, and I'll see you all next lesson. I'll see you tomorrow. See you later, guys.